We are starting off the final day of Day 23 Expo 2019. Can't believe that it's already almost over. We've still got a whole lot of stuff to do today. Um, we're going to be walking you around the show floor. It's that fancy Day 23 Expo sign. I don't think we've gone this way yet on the stream. it onto the show floor. If there's anything you guys want to see, uh, please let me know in the chat. I will just be kind of walking around, wandering aimlessly, uh, talking about some of the fun stuff we see. But um, Mr. Naps is waiting in uh, line currently for the uh, 
Parks and Experiences panel, which we are going to be recording all, if everything goes to plan, <laughs> then we will be recording. Um, you never really know what's gonna quite happen at these. So we are incredibly excited. Uh, that'll be at 10.30. You go 10.30 to 12. Good morning. I did. Thank you so much. There's a second Hulu pin. Oh my gosh. Do we need a scan or anything? Okay, perfect. Woohoo. Thanks, you too. Guys, there's a second Hulu pin. How exciting. It says Hulu has live sports. Oh, we wanted to try it. What is this uptown vision here? Good morning. Here's the line for that Disney store. There is that gold member lounge that is where you can hang out, recharge. I did see Roger in here, but Roger did not see me. Which way should I go? Should I go left? Should I go right? <laughs> I think we might go right. Just because why not? There is that fin lounge. And off we go. I'm very much looking forward to the parks panel. Um, it's always one of the biggest things every expo um that is the the stuff that i that i really put my mind on <laughs> everything is uh parks and resorts so it's pretty great it's very awkward when you're in a crowd and you're talking to your phone because you're live streaming and strangers turn around because you they think that you are talking to them um it happens frequently it's kind of one of my favorite things There is the line for Mickey's of Glendale and the Mickey's of Glendale open store. They've got some really cool stuff inside Mickey's of Glendale and a uh, really cool Epcot merchandise. I love merchandise. Um, the parks panel is going to be at 10.30 a.m. if everything goes according to plan. It'll be 10.30 a.m. to 12 p.m. I'm sure that in that hour and a half there is going to be a lot of news coming out. Very, very, very excited, and I don't really know what to expect. Uh, we are not uh, able to be able to stream any of the panels live, unfortunately, but we will be recording that uh, if everything goes to plan, and we will have that up later today or tonight. At some point, definitely, we will have that up. That's one of our uh, biggest priorities today. We're going to take a turn into the Imagineering uh, Pavilion. Yes, of course. This has been one of my favorite things of the expo. I just finally got to explore it yesterday. Um, and I love, I love Epcot and I love all things coming. It's Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway. There's some new Epcot stuff. And here, revealing Sunday. Today is Sunday what's going to happen. We've also got the Revealing Sunday poster over there. We've got the whole model of Epcot. Well, most, a lot of Epcot, not even most. I would definitely be excited to see a new pavilion come through. I don't even know. There's two announcements. So I really don't know 
what's coming. I would love to see an announcement that Buzzy's coming back. Just, I wanna see the Parks and Resorts panel hosted by Buzzy. Resorts panel is going to be at 10:30 a.m. and it's going to run until 12 p.m. if everything goes according to plan and nothing goes late or anything like that. So it'll be an hour and a half this morning, starting in about an hour. That's exciting. Uh, Mr. Daps is currently in the queue for that. I'm trying not to get in people's photos. Ah! Are you in line for the Parks and Resorts panel? That is exciting and I'm very jealous. Spider-Man just suddenly moved and it was Tom Holland. Because that would make me laugh. That must be slightly terrifying. everything with me. If anybody needs a band aid. I didn't get any And thank you for having me at D20. We are not going to be able to stream the parks panel, unfortunately. Uh, we will be videotaping, uh, and that will hopefully go up later today or tonight. Thank you. 
We're going to be heading towards center stage. So that's kind of been our um, our like hangout place, this expo. It's been super fun. We've got to see a lot of people up close. Um, a lot of the voices of things behind. Uh, I know, I know. A lot of people behind the voices uh, that you would hear in parks or in animated or so many different things. Um, so it's very fun to be able to get up close just for that. Up here. Here's the queue for the D23 Expo Arena. Shannon! 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 It's definitely a little bit crazy. Oh, and it looks like we're actually just about to see the Expo show. Excited or sad? I'm a little sad. It's somewhat bittersweet, isn't it? It really is. You feel like, oh, this is the last day. Oh, but what a great day it is going to be. It's going to be amazing. We've got a lot in store. You know what? Are you guys doing your, we've talked about it all weekend, the Run Disney Virtual 5K. We participated. We earned our medals. We hope you guys have too. I'm if guessing you have not, the, the, the Run Disney booth is right in the back over this way. And you can go in, sign up, or you can go to rundisney.com. That's right. Yes, and when you do, and you participate in the virtual 5K, you not only get the medal, which you get with every Run Disney event, but you get this exclusive item for being here Ooh. at D23. I'm wearing it as a bracelet, but it's also a pin. It makes, it's a versatile accessory. You can wear that on your bracelet. You can wear it on a lapel pin. You can wear it uh, on your hat. Yes. Everywhere. Um, so yeah, make sure you, like Bill said, stop by their booth. Check them out online, www.rundisney.com, or on all social media outlets at Run Disney. So we promised. Sinking into the West here with my. Uh, yeah, well, never mind. We promised you that there would be lots of cool stuff to do today, and we Brett, you have a little bit of a rundown. There is the plenty highlights. to do, and you people in line probably already know about. It, but let's go over it. Yeah, you know, at um, 10 o'clock, the heroines of the Disney Galaxies, presented by Box Lunch and hosted by our very own Expo Show, Ashley X9, who is not with us because she's getting ready for that. Um, it's going to be a great talk about all those Disney heroines. Make sure you check that out. What else? There's lots of great signings happening today. Leslie Iwerks. Randy Newman, Floyd Norman, Stacia Martin, Bill Farmer, the list goes on, so make sure you check the D23 Expo app for all the fun happenings at Talent Central and around the other vendor booths. They'll be making appearances throughout the day. Mickey's Disco Dance Party is happening here on Center Stage yeah. at 12.30. That's super fun. That is super fun. If you're wearing your bell bottoms and your platform shoes, make sure you're out here to join Mickey and his pals dancing in their fun disco album outfits, celebrating the 40th anniversary of the Mis Mickey, the Miski. Who's that? The Miski, yeah. I don't that's, know. That's Mickey's unspoken of brother. Um, the Mickey Mouse Disco Album's 40th anniversary, so please join the party, have some fun. They're here at 12.30 and then again at 3.30. Uh, also happening is the 50 years of the Walt Disney Archives. Pretty good. 50 years, the Disney Archives. I get it. I get it. Started by Dave Smith back in the day, all by himself, just cataloging Walt's office, and now they've turned into this amazing part of the organization, cataloging everything from theme parks to movies to TV shows to, to company happenings. They're a great group. And they are an incredible group, and Becky Klein is an able and wonderful manager who makes sure that this all runs so smoothly. And, and one of our dearest friends, we can say that way. Yeah. yeah. Uh, what else? One last thing. Oh, how could I forget this one? Everybody at 415 in Hall D23. That's the biggest stage you can find here, which I'm saying that because that doesn't make me nervous at all. No. Is the Disney Character Voices 30th Anniversary Celebration. Featuring the voices of Mickey Mouse. Oh boy, that's me. Donald Duck, Goofy, 
and a whole other cast of characters. So make sure you come by for a behind the scenes peek of Disney character voices and all they've been doing over the past 30 years, preserving character integrity, doing all the casting and making sure that all the characters you know and love sound the best that they can. So please join us. It's going to be a fun, fun event this afternoon. Definitely. That's right. great. Okay, how many of you are gold members of D23? Show of hands, Everybody gold members. Everybody out there, gold yeah. members? Yeah. Look so, at we're going to introduce you to the man who designed your pin set, that incredibly beautiful pin set. Let's bring out Ricky De Los Angeles. Hey, Ricky. Hello. Have a seat. We saved you a seat right oh, here. Thank you so much. Conveniently next yeah. to you. Thank you. Woo. Ricky, thanks for joining us. Oh, thanks for having me. So you are a character artist with Disney Parks, experiences, and products. That's right. How did you become an artist? Um, well, uh, after I was born, that's probably the earliest. It's a good place to start. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I just never stopped drawing. Um, after college, I got an internship at Disney Consumer Products and uh, kept in touch, did freelance work for them. And then when a, a spot opened up, um, they offered me a job. And uh, awesome. now I'm there, I've been there five years. Where'd you go to school at? Uh, California Institute of the Arts, or Cal Arts for short. Cal Arts? That was my dream school. I did, I did not get in. He's bona fide. I did not get in. I had to go to Ringling because I did not get in. Well, I'm still paying it back, so. No. Oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> Me too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I'm a voice actor now, so what's that do? <laughs> hey. Very cool. cool. So you brought some pictures for us to take a look I at did, to learn yeah. about the process. Yeah. Um, what What is the inspiration for the designs of these incredible kids? So D23 approached me um, with uh, helping them revamp these designs for the gold member gift. They had some previous designs that were done, but they weren't looking very cohesive. Um, so my approach was to think about how to make them more cohesive and uh, unified. And I started thinking about, okay, this gold member gift, it's a very special gift for our gold members that are sent out every year. So I really wanted these to be unique, one of a kind, special, uh, gifts. So I thought, oh, gold. So why don't we just make them gold? So the color scheme I picked was gold, black, and white. And a bit of the inspiration was from some pins I've seen out uh, today by Clover Scout and Brittany Lee. Just really simple graphic uh, shapes and colors. I love this style. It's very trendy right now. Yeah. So this was like a proof of concept I did for Donald's of the direction I wanted to go in. And once D23 said, yeah, yeah, let's do it. So I started um, my research. For Donald, um, the creative process, I just start looking at reference from our awesome archives. Um, this sketch was based off the wise little hen model sheet from his first cartoon. So I just took some of those poses and streamlined it a bit, minimized the detail. Um, yeah. It, that must be a, an amazing asset to have the uh, animation research library and the archives to go back to when you're working on something like this to kind of see how it was done originally, right? So, yeah, yeah. Um, my uh, my former uh, art director Dave Pacheco, um, he has a treasure trove of of archive art. And, uh, he's a great resource, and he has a really good connection with the archives. That's awesome. Very cool. Yeah. So, in terms of the other pins, uh, variation is key. Um, these are some other variations I did for uh, Haunted Mansion. Just Haunted Mansion. <laughs> Tower of Terror. Yeah. Just exploring different color variations, shape variations. Uh, but I ultimately felt that the service elevator circular shape was the best, uh, the best design that was the essence of the yeah, it tells a great story, because I mean, the logo is one thing, the elevator is another, but that, that's the first thing you see, and it's like that anticipation of the, the floors counting down to yeah. your load. That's awesome. Yeah. So what, what design was the most challenging for you? Um, I would say the, the runner-up was maybe Haunted Mansion, um, because there was, it, there's so much detail, and I was trying to play with the hatbox, the, the, the hitchhiking ghosts, the hatbox ghosts, See if I can make 
those stand out because I haven't seen pins like that before. Um, but eventually I settled on just the mansion itself because it's so iconic and I pulled directly from the poster because I just love that graphic shape of the mansion in the poster. And I added a moon, some bats, some tombstones uh, as an homage to the, the Q line, you know, where you see the pet cemetery. Yep. And yep. That. Very spooky. Yeah. But, uh, but the most challenging one was definitely the Temple of Doom pin because this movie, there's so much going on. Uh, how do you, how do you uh, confine the entire movie into a single two inch pin? So I started a lot, a lot of variations. I started with Indy's hat. I was like, oh, what if I made a story within the, the hat? Um, that is work. <laughs> and that's another variation where Indy is on the rope bridge about to cut it down. Uh, see the mine train ride. I try to fit it in there. That's my favorite part. Yeah, I love that. right. I think that's what everyone thinks about. Yeah, you, you can't think of Temple Doom without thinking of the grand finale with them racing to the mine carts. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So that's kind of what. Well, I also did another variation where we had Indy's like face uh, and some other detail like bugs, the Indian elephants, the a lot of fire. Yeah, the fire. Yep. No one wanted fire in the <laughs> in the pin. Um, but back to your point, uh, yeah. the mine train. So I think this is where the direction we were going. Like we got to do the mine train, and then they, D23 suggested to have like the Indian palace that we're introduced to. Did you ever consider monkey brains? No, somehow. Man, no. I don't know how I would have just illustrated the, that. The idea of somebody's yeah. heart being monkey brains. Yeah. 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 yeah, right. That movie monkey. is so dark. So I didn't want to go too dark. <laughs> um, so this is the direction it was starting to fall into, you know? Okay, what if I had the, the, the skull, the Kali skull with the stones and the, and the eyes and the nose? Um, you could see I could, I did a little homage to the scene where they're on the plane. Yeah, oh yeah. See the little uh, mountain on the top and the airplane? Yep. The crash land. The bug scene? You know, the, the insect scene? Yeah. 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 The creepy crawlies. Yeah. But ultimately, less is more. Um, so this was the, what we oh, ended up with, cool. which I feel sums up the movie. It's perfect. Pretty well. Tells the story. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Very cool. Uh, yeah. So that was your most challenging, I said, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Just because it had the most variations. And sure. Yeah, that's a lot to, to figure out. Yeah. So which one was the one that was the most fun to do? It was definitely not. This one, because this one was also a challenge. Another challenge. Another because challenge. Marvel, so there's so much Marvel out there, but I essentially based it off the original, original first issue comic. Um, but I tried other things too, like maybe Spider-Man, because Spider-Man kind of sums up Marvel for me. Um, yeah. But ultimately we settled on the, the little comic book with the Human Torch, because he was the character that was featured in the first I did not know that. Well, I, I love that you just captured the comic book itself. I mean, that's genius. Yeah. It's so simple, but probably took a few steps to yeah get back to that idea. Yeah, and and also just the, the the aesthetic playing with the the gold and the white. It's like, what do you choose to make gold? Yeah. What do you choose to make white? Right. And so it was perfect for this because okay, we'll make the pages white so that it reads as paper. I think that's a misconception people often make when it comes to simplified art. We've got limited palette, right? People think, well, it's three colors. It's easier than something with unlimited. It's like, actually, no. You've got to be really intentional about what you're choosing and where. Yeah, and then it's going to be it's going to be small. It's going to be two yeah. inches, so it has to read really fast. Yeah. You have to consider the process of making that pin and, and yeah. like what's raised and what's not. And the, and the yeah. pin process is not easy to anticipate. Yeah, the, the D23, they were... They were just really supportive. Like I told them, like, look, we should do gold. And I told them, like, okay, let's try like rose gold and uh, more of a uh, what do you say, a, a copper-looking gold, or sure. um, aged, aged. Gold. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Thinking of all my uh, design finishes now. 
That's right. We we keep jumping the gun here and, and trying to move you past past your your predetermined okay. slides. So we're ready to get to the fun. Yeah. What was the fun now, one? This was hey. the fun one. The fun pin for me was the Muppet movie anniversary pin. Um, my favorite sequence is the moving right along song sequence where they're in the Studebaker, uh, Kermit and Fozzie. Uh, so I tried doing those pins because I haven't seen that pin before. I always, my process was, okay, what hasn't been done? So that's what I tried doing. Um, I even in the top ones, I added a rainbow, a little Hollywood sign, some music notes. It's great. Um, but as a two inch pin, I think it was going to be uh, too much. Um, though I think the one on the far left would have worked. Yeah, I think so too. But maybe it looks too weird with them kind of sticking out of the roof of the car. Nah. Like a convertible? It... <laughs> Suspend belief, right? <laughs> right. But eventually we went with the Kermit playing the banjo because that opens the film quintessential. Yeah. And you're right, you see it and you know instantly it takes you to that moment and, and you're there. Yeah, and that's my wife's favorite pin, the Kermit one. Well, so, that's all the more reason to exactly. have done it that way. Yeah. That's great. <laughs> Do you have a concept you would wish you had the chance to make? Something that kind of got dropped in the process? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, so for Up, you know, we did the, uh, the mailbox, the Carl and Ellie yes. mailbox. But I had another idea. So this was, I really, really loved this pin. And uh, it was actually based off of this Pixar concept art by Ricky Nierba, another Ricky, um, because it was it was already done. It was already in gold and black. And I, um, maybe one day. One day. Oh, that's really cool. That's right. You have a head start for the next for the next <laughs> set. Now, Brad, I know you've got to get to another stage. I do, unfortunately. So we're uh, sorry. We'll say goodbye. Goodbye. All right. I'll see you real soon. Uh -huh. Everybody, wave goodbye to Brad. Thanks, Ricky. It was great talking to you. Great to meet you. No, you've got. Me. I'm going to ask the last question, then I'm going to go. Okay. What was the most rewarding pin you worked on? And I'm not gonna stick around for the answer, so enjoy. <laughs> I'll see you all later. Thanks a lot. Bye, Brett. <laughs> yeah. So this out of this whole process, you had fun, you had challenge, you had what? What gave you the most reward? It was. Wait for it. Ooh. Sparkle, sparkle. The Disneyland TV series pin, which I'm actually, yep. I'm actually wearing that one right here, um, because I enjoyed watching uh, the Disneyland TV series on Vault Disney when it was on Disney Channel. Does everyone remember Vault yeah, Disney? Yeah, yeah right. Ah, I love that show. And then you know the opening, Walt Disney presents Disneyland, and it opens you know with the castle. So I I used uh, for inspiration the original background painting for the series to base off the castle. Um, some inspiration by Kevin Kidney and Jody Daly's artwork. They do really graphic paper designs. Uh, and then also the, the old school television set. I wanted it to be placed in a, in a television. So this was also kind of challenging too because how do you sum up the, seat, the TV series in a two inch pin, right? But I looked up these old vintage television sets, um, which are so cool. Um, and can we make like a like an HD version of these, you know? I think they ought to be able to one of these days, my goodness. I mean, you know, the one the one uh, television on the in the center there is called a Philco Predicta. It had one major problem with it, and that was the fact that the screen was so big that you had to have a huge cabinet behind it made out of plastic, right? That stuck out like this far from the front of the TV. It was unwieldy, and moving it was a two-person job. Wow. So, but nonetheless, it looks incredibly cool in the front. Yeah. So, we want people to be able to take a look at these. Oh, sure. Well. So, we'll yeah. do that in just a second, because I know you have a couple more. Yeah. Um, so, like I said, Absolutely I really gorgeous. wanted, you know, a gold finish. But when I first opened these, when I saw them for the very first time as pins, I was, like, blown away. Because it's like literally looking at gold, <laughs> like treasure. And so my hope is that when gold members receive this, it really feels like really special, like a, like a treasure. It really is. I think it and is. the work is just exquisite. Thank you. It was a real pleasure. I've, I've always wanted to design Disney pins and uh, this was a dream come true.
And on top of that, you can show them your shirt, because that's where the television pin <laughs> is. Yes. yes. Wow. <laughs> Very nice. So, Ricky, what is next for you? What's the next project you're working on? Um, I'm currently a character artist on uh, Soul, Pixar Soul. Um, I'm helping out with the character line art, the stylized character uh, line art that'll go in the style guide. So any soul art that ends up on merchandise, uh, that's what I'm working on. That's exciting. Very, very good. Really cool. I love working with Pixar. They're really collaborative and really friendly. And yeah. Woohoo! That's great. Ricky, thank you for being with us. Everyone, big round of applause for Ricky de Los Angeles. And now you know it really is worth it to sign up for the gold membership. It's the truth. It is the truth. All right, so... All of you are going to be leaving the expo later today. For those of you who live other places, you're probably traveling with your suitcases. And when you travel, you probably want to travel in style and show your love of Disney. American Tourister is going to tell us about some of their really, really cool offerings. So please welcome Stephanie Goldman. Stephanie, you just go right over here, take take Minnie with you. Okay. Why don't we just oh, stand? Wait, all right. Let's just with stand so we can... There we go. There we go. Have a chair right over there. We will talk about these. Okay. These are incredibly beautiful. And not only that, they wear like iron. I have to admit, we bought one several expos ago, one of the, one of the fabric ones, and it, we travel a lot, and it has held up so well, and I'm not being paid by American tourists. Well, that's great to hear. Yeah, we love it, and it's got the D23 logo on it. It was, yeah, just really, really beautiful. I love these. They this are is great. So them. tell us about the offerings that you have. Yes, yeah, so we have a full range of uh, Mickey and Minnie luggage with us at uh, this expo. We also have some fun accessories. We have locks and luggage stickers and luggage tags. We have um, yeah. some neck pillows as well. Um, we even have a little bit of Star Wars merchandise left, but I understand that's going fairly quickly. So. If anyone wants a Millennium Falcon carrying on bag, I would suggest heading there now. There we go. So what are the, what are the in, in terms of the luggage itself, what are the sizes you have available? Yeah, sure. So we have um, our uh, Mickey and Minnie luggage comes in the carry-on 21-inch size, which is what I brought with me today. And then we also have a bigger check size, the 28-inch. And we have uh, both hard side and top side. Very cool. The hard side stuff, I know it, it weighs a bit more, but it is also a bit more protective if you're putting fragile things into your carry-on or deck luggage. Well, actually, hard side has come a long way since, you know, back yeah, in the yeah. day, and it is really light right now. Personally, I was a big soft side person before I started working there, and I have totally switched to hard side. I think you get as much stuff in there, and I like the extra little bit of durability, and it is really lightweight. I noticed one of the things on this particular hard side is this extra zipper that allows for more room, is that right? Absolutely. All of our cases expand. Uh, you get about, about two inches of extra room, so if you bought more at the expo than you came with, you can unzip it. Um, it may not fit in the overhead bin once it's uh, expanded, but you can certainly try. Give it your best shot, that's right. So what type of a warranty do you have on your products? That's a great question. So um, all of American Tourist and Luggage includes a 10-year warranty. So any kind of you know, a zipper or wheel or handle problem, just go to americantourister.com and someone will help you with that. That's great. So where can we find you here at the Expo? So we are all the way down in Hall C, uh, sort of diagonally across from the Dream Store. Okay, great. And you've got some Expo deals for us? Yes. So we have, if you are a gold member or a sorcerer, you get 23% off your entire purchase. We are also running power hours. So we suggest coming by um, you know, every hour and checking to see what kind of deal we're running. Wonderful. All right, I'm 
sold. I'm Do sold. We, I think, I think it's business. time for us to leave okay. now. <laughs> We're going shopping. We're going shopping. All right, Stephanie, well, thank you. Waiting for you. Thank you. All right, take care. Big round of applause for Stephanie Goldman. Go visit American Tourister. And you know, there are so many great, great opportunities for you to, to get things that you can't find anywhere else. We've got the big names. We've got American Tourister. We've got beautiful Disney Enchanted Jewelry right next door. We've got the Disney Store. We've got the Dream Store. We've got, you know, so many cool things. We've got our own Hollywood Disney Store. And there's so many mm -hmm. wonderful vendors right here as well with really cool stuff that you won't find anywhere else. Go ahead, take a look, and take something special home that will remind you of the great time you had here at the Expo. All right, everybody. Have a great day. We'll be back later on. More fun here on Center Stage coming up. Have a good day. That was the Expo show. This is the craziness of the queue it wraps around that way. Um, the Parks and Resorts panel will be at 10.30, which is in a half hour. Mr. Vaps is currently inside getting a camera and everything set up. Disney has prohibited live streaming, so we will not be able to live stream, unfortunately. We will have a video coming to you as soon as we can process it and get it up. Uh, we are very, very excited to share. Uh, if you do want to follow along live, go to twitter.com, follow at daps underscore magic. We'll be sharing a lot a lot, a lot, a lot of everything that uh, is going to be happening. So we will get the news to you as fast as our hands can possibly type them. And uh, we can't wait to share all the fun with you. So for that, goodbye until then.